NAD levels decline with aging. Now in this video we're going to talk about what causes that decline, why does that happen, and about a way of preventing that. There is something that might be able to prevent this decline from happening. NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is something that we need in our body. It's essential for the production of energy and a lot of different processes. And lately, we've been hearing about the sirtuins. So, they have to have NAD in order to work. So they use and consume NAD in order to be able to fix NAD, uh, oh, sorry, fix DNA breaks or silence information. And the information that they silence has to do with aging. So they are uh, silencing the information that leads to aging when they work. But in order to work, they have to have NAD. And when our NAD levels in the body decline, they can no longer do their work as efficiently. So what can we do? Well, the more common strategy has been to boost NAD levels. And I have a video on that telling you about the different strategies and how to actually boost it as efficiently as possible. But what if we could find out why this decline actually happens and find a way of preventing that? That would be interesting as well. So why do NAD levels decline as we age? Well, it turns out that researchers have found the mechanism for how this works. And there's actually a really interesting paper, I think it's from 2016, that shows exactly how they went about figuring all of this out. It's really interesting. But what is the conclusion? So, NAD levels go down. They can go down, one, if we cannot synthesize NAD sufficiently, right? Or if we break it down too quickly. So it turns out that the age-related uh, decrease, decline, has to do with the breakdown. So we have a few enzymes that use NAD. We have the sirtuins, right? These are the silencing, uh, age-silencing genes. And we want them to work. So we want to have plenty of NAD for them to work so that aging does not take place or it does not take pl place at an accelerated rate uh, leading to diseases and problems, inflammations and things like that. So sirtuins break down NAD, they use NAD. Uh, we have PARPs uh, there's, I think, about 14 different types of PARPs in the human body. These are also interesting to have because they help when DNA, their DNA breaks, uh, double-strand DNA breaks. So we definitely want to have DNA, uh, NAD for them to work, but we can try to protect our body so that we don't have so many DNA breaks. And we can do that by trying to avoid unnecessary radiation. So if there are any um, things like non-essential CT scans or uh, maybe uh, in some places security checks, uh, you have to go through certain scans sometimes, or uh, x-rays, things that are not essential, it's good to try to avoid them because they really drain our NAD levels because then they set off the parts that have to work. And in that process, we also lose a little bit more information. So if we can avoid radiation, that's good. Okay, but the parts are also not responsible for the age-related NAD decline. So what is? Well, um, CD38, uh, cluster differentiation 38. This is an enzyme, an ectoenzyme, 
we find it especially on the outside of cells, especially immune cells. It has to do with uh, immune response. Uh, it's related to uh, calcium signaling as well. And what it actually does in our body over time is that it uses up NAD, right? As well as making it difficult for the synthesis of NAD to take place. It's the, the last step from NMN into NAD that it inhibits. So we think that this is a great weapon uh, for immune, immune cells to have for certain types of bacteria because they will uh, because these bacteria will need NAD and they will just destroy their metabolism with CD38. But the problem is that over time CD38 does increase. Now in studies where they looked at mice and they looked at different tissues, a lot of different tissues in mice over time, they were able to see that CD38 um, is um, increased, so you have two or three times as much of it as you start aging. Uh, well, actually, this is for mice. They looked at mice at that at that time, um, and so they were able to correlate this with the NAD decline that comes naturally with age. So when there is this overexpression of CD38 in our body, is it possible to find an inhibitor, or a CD38 inhibitor, so that this overexpression does not happen and so we don't get the NAD decline? Really interesting. It turns out that this might be possible because uh, there are some artificial CD38 uh, inhibitors and there are some natural ones and there's one um, 78C I think it's called they used this one on mice and they wanted to check exactly this now if you give this inhibitor to mice will you be able to stop the age-related NAD decline and the answer is yes you can by giving this inhibitor, this artificial inhibitor, to mice, they were able to stop the age-related NAD decline. Really interesting. But what's even more interesting is that there are also natural CD38 inhibitors. And um, there's a list of them, actually. But one is super interesting, at least in my opinion, and that is quercetin. See, quercetin is already known to be a direct CERT1 activator. So it already activates CERT2 in 1 in humans, for instance, not only in humans. And it helps resveratrol become even more efficient. And it's, it goes into the brain, it helps, it's neuroprotective, it's it helps with uh, uh, viruses, and it's it's just so interesting already. And now we find out that it is also a CD38 inhibitor. So the question becomes, how much do you need, and will it work in humans? Great questions, and I hope that we will see studies on this very soon. That would be awesome. I don't know if we will, because quercetin is a natural substance, so I don't know who would fund such a study. That's probably very expensive. But it would be very interesting to see exactly how much quercetin one would have to take to stop the age-related decline of NAD, but not completely inhibit Three, uh, uh, CD38 because it seems to have a positive effects on the body as well but we don't seem to need it in levels two or three times as high as they are when we are little so this is um, something that 
we don't know about how much and will it work in humans. But it's super interesting because we now, summarizing, we know that the NAD decline with age has to do with the breakdown of NAD, which has to do with CD38 becoming more active. And we know that there are inhibitors and that at least in mice, it's possible to stop that decline by taking inhibitors. So if you enjoyed this video, please sponsor me on Patreon. Even a small amount will really make a difference for me. And I'll be able to make lots of videos, write articles, and even books on uh, interesting subjects. I'll see you in the next video.